So I've done a bit more coding to the site now. We now have a button on the right side where they can post a new lead. I'll just click on it here and you'll see that we get this modal popping up and we have a form here where they can post a new lead. The way I've decided to do this is to separate the form into three sections. So basically we have two rows here. In the top row we have two sections. On the left side um, this part takes up 50% of the width and the right side takes up 50% of the width as well. And then finally um, we have another section at the bottom where you can use up 100% of the width of the modal. So depending on the element you're putting in and, and how much width you need, you can select one of the groups. So this um, like country of loading here, this is in group 1. And on the right side, this is group 2. And the bottom one is group 3. So keeping with our theme of uh, you know keeping things dynamic and writing less code, um, there's only one form used for all of the different lead sections, FCL, LCL, etc. And what happens is that form is inside a view and we're going to pass it an array of data and that array is going to contain a lot of information. It's going to contain the label information, it's going to in include whether it's a text input, whether it's a select input, it's going to include, include all of the options, all of the placeholders, and any other data that the form needs. Um, we are going to um, build up that array within one of the classes and then pass that through to the view um, which is going to get passed off to these sub views uh, which contain the forms. So I think there's a lot of different ways you could go about building your form dynamically. So what I'm going to do in this video is just show you the way that I did it and maybe that can give you some ideas for your own site. So let's go over to the controller first um, where things start out and you'll see we have this new variable we're passing through to the view called form fields and form fields is set to um, the result of this leads get form data function invocation so let's go over to the leads class and see this method and you'll see here basically it just checks which page it's, um, it's on using this switch statement and if it's F FCL then we are going to return here um, the results from this new class FCL lead get form data. So this FCL lead class is a new class that I created inside the repository folder and if we go in there and we see this um, function get form data basically what's happening here is we are just going to return an array so we're going to build up an array and each of the elements in the array is going to be a different form element and each of those individual elements is going to contain a hash and the hash is going to it's basically going to include all of the data that's needed so let's just take a look at this um, at the first element here um, the first one is actually it's a select um, it's going to be a select drop down we include the column name uh, loading country so this is going to be used um, to insert into the database and this is also going to be the name of the field so we pass through the column name we pass through the label because each of the elements is going to have a label uh, we pass through the group so this way the form knows where it should display it should it display it in the top left should it display it in the bottom where it has a hundred percent width so we let it know the group um, the type of element that we're working with and if it's a select um, I also have this other index options because every select has all of its options. In this case, options is set to countries get select data. So as you know, um, in options they have basically they have the option value and then they have the option text. So um, what this countries get select data is going to return is it's going to return a hash. So just similar to this one I have at the bottom here, um, we have the um, we have the value and we also have the text that's shown to the user. In some cases they will be the same thing and in some cases they won't. Uh, we can take a look at countries get select data. Uh, if I go over to that class here it's also within the repository and basically um, I'm grabbing all of these countries from the database but um, because that's not going to change very much um, I first want to check if it's in the cache so I say if cache has country select data then just return that and then we're out of this function um, but if not then what we're gonna do is we're gonna build up um, that countries array so the first thing we I do 
is I select the ID and the, the English country name from the countries table. I order that alphabetically. I return the collection. And then what I want to do after that is I want to build up my custom options array where the country's ID um, is set to the value and then the text that we're going to show is going to be the English name. So I build up that options array and then I, because it's not in the cache, I'm now going to put it in the cache um, for an hour. So you'll see I have this cache put. Um, this is the, the index of the cache and then this is the value we're storing for it and we're going to store that for 60 minutes. And then finally I return the options array. Let's just look at a few different kinds of form elements here. We saw a select already. Um, let's go down here to this element. Here we have um, a number input. So in HTML5 you can have an input with a type of number. And you'll see um, nothing too special here. We have the column name, the label, the type is number. And with the, um, with the, number, with the number elements you can give them a min and a max attribute. So I pass that through as well. In some cases, I also want to set a default value for the user. So if I need to do that, I will pass that through as well. And you can see value is set to 1. Just going to the last element here, we have a text. Uh, we have a text element. And same sort of thing is going on here, but the type is set to text. And I've also passed through a placeholder um, just to give them a hint on what they're supposed to do. So this whole array is returned um, back to the leads class here, get form data, and then we're returning this. So that gets returned, of course, to the controller, and then that gets passed through to the view. Inside the index view, what we'll do is we'll include um, this modals.newlead. If we go into our modal view here, you'll see the entire um, Twitter bootstrap modal, and you'll see the three different sections that I've created. Um, basically, we have one row here, we have another row down here. Inside the top row, we have two divs. We have a class of call MD6. So because that's MD6, um, that's only going to take up 50% of the width of the modal. And then we have another div down here, which is going to take up the other 50% on the right side. Uh, Twitter bootstrap, of course, um, the entire length will be 12 units. So if you have 6 and 6 here, um, each one is going to take up the left 50% and the other 50% is going to be on the right. And then when I needed more space such as my text input for the comments, we have a new row for that and that class is called nb12 which takes up the whole width and that is going to have the form with a group of three there. So you'll see for each of these form groups um, I'm loading in the uh, forms.newlead view and I'm passing each of them the form fields and I'm also letting them know uh, which group they are so we can see group 1, 2, and 3 here. So let's go over to one of the forms.newlead views and just see what's going on there. Basically we're looping through all of the fields um, but the first thing we're doing is we're checking the group. So we're only going to output the, you know, the select or the input or, or whatever. We're only going to um, output that if there's a match on the group. So in this first in the first case when the group is 1 um, it must equal 1 if it wants to be output here. In some ways this is a little bit inefficient because we're looping through all of the form fields three different times um, but because you know the because basically the array we're passing through is only going to be around 10 elements anyways um, it's not going to have any performance impact on our application. So I'm not going to go into detail um, of what's happening on here, but uh, basically you can get the idea of what I'm doing. Um, in each of these different cases is checking the type. Is it a text? Is it a select? Is it a number? And depending on what it is, then we're going to output the HTML accordingly. You can see a text input being output here, a select input, and you can add um, you can add more cases in this. Perhaps you want um, let's see, we have number inputs. Maybe you want to add one for a hidden input. So you can add those things as necessary into this subview. So basically the nice thing about doing your forms like this is all you're going to need to do is basically like in my case with FCL lead, like I'm just setting up the form array right here. And I'm going to set up the form arrays for all of the different, you know, forms that we need on the site. 
but the nice thing is is that you'll only need um, one view for that and you shouldn't need to change the view in the future or add any new ones um, once you get that the way you want it you won't need to change that anymore and the only thing that where you'll need to make changes is inside um, is inside your data array basically that you're that you're gonna pass into it so if for example in the future um, the text inputs in your in your forms you decide it's really important that all of those text inputs have a class of important well what you would need to do is go into every different one of the form views or all of the different you know forms you have in your site and you would need to add that class of important but if you do it the way I did it which is just passing through um, an array to this view you will only will need to change um, you will only need to make changes to one of the views and then that will um, that change will be global across all of the forms on your site.